welcome to the next class children now in this video we will be continuing with the chapter digestive system last time we have discussed the structure of alimentary canal the structure of tooth and we were talking about the stomach where i told you the structure as well as the uh, pinctures which are present in the stomach now as you all know that stomach leads to the next part of your alimentary canal which is known as small intestine so small intestine starts from the stomach from here so means this tube from here this highly coiled and it is near about 7 meters long in total and it is known as small intestine now this small intestine is further subdivided into three parts this is the first part which receives the semi digested food of the stomach and last time i told you that that is called chyme now this will receive the chyme and this first part of the small intestine is known as duodenum the next part this one it is known as jejunum duodenum is uh, about 1 meters long jejunum is about 2 meters long and the later part this one which is about 4 meters long is known as the ileum the last part of the small intestine to make it more clear i will draw it and show it to you so for example you have read that now this was your esophagus let's say this is your esophagus and we have discussed that esophagus leads to the stomach and this stomach now will forms the small intestine and as i told you this this part is known as duodenum this is known as duodenum the first part of your small intestine it is about 1 meters long and then it becomes highly coiled to form jejunum and the last part of the jejunum or you can say jejunum leads to the next part which we call it as ileum so this will be jejunum j e j u jejunum and this part will be known as this entire part will be known as ileum so duodenum jejunum ileum together they form the small intestine now if we talk about duodenum so as i told you that duodenum receives the semi digested food of the stomach and here there is a sphincter which will allow which will not allow the regurgitation the backflow of the food so duodenum receives now two ducts one duct is from the liver which brings the juices of the liver and we call it bile juice you all know that liver secretes bile and that bile is brought by a common duct we call it common bile duct it opens in the duodenum and this bile helps in the further uh, breakdown of the food we will discuss particularly about the fats and then second here you know that we have pancreas the next gland digestive gland and the duct of the pancreas is known as pancreatic duct so duodenum also receives the pancreatic duct and duodenum receives the bile duct common bile duct pancreas contains pancreatic juice the glands glandular cells of pancreas secrete their secretions and we call them pancreatic juice pancreatic juice contains various enzymes which will cause the further breakdown of the food in the duodenum now let us refer to the next diagram now here they have shown this is your duodenum the first part of the small intestine and it is receiving the duct from this is the uh, this is suppose here is the liver and as you know that liver secretes the juice which we call it bile that bile gets stored in a small uh, structure we call it gall bladder so this is the cystic duct cystic duct which is bringing bile from the from the gall bladder and here some ducts are coming from directly from the liver we call them hepatic ducts and they both combine to form common bile duct so the juices of the liver and the bile will come into the duodenum and from here the pancreas we have pancreatic duct and the pancreatic duct is also opening in the duodenum so now let us see how what role is played by the bile now see children bile is a yellowish green watery fluid produced in the liver you all know that liver secretes the juice we call it bile juice and uh, it is brought through the hepatic duct hepatic duct is joined by the cystic duct which stores the bile juice and bile can also open directly into the duodenum as it generally happens and sometimes it is uh, stored in the gall bladder 
Now this color of the bile is because of the two pigments. Bile as they have written it is yellowish green. Yellowish green color if you will say that from where this yellowish green color has come. It is due to the breakdown of red blood cells. Children you all have read that in liver old red blood cells are broken down. Means you know that red blood cells have a lifespan of 120 days. So that means after every 120 days many red blood cells are broken down in the liver. So when they break down the certain pigments are released and these pigments are called biliviridin and bilirubin. These are the pigments which give coloring substance or we can say these pigments are actually the uh, sodium bicarbonate are actually the salts of sodium bicarbonate and they also give the color to the bile. It contains sodium bicarbonate which neutralizes the acid content of the food. Now so far we have discussed that stomach in stomach you have read that there was HCL and the stomach in the stomach the gastric juice makes the food acidic. But when the acidic food enters here when it enters in the duodenum here the food will become alkaline because bile juice contains makes the food alkaline. So here they have written acidic chyme which was received from the stomach. Now in the presence of bile and this sodium bicarbonate will become alkaline. Its consistency will change. Earlier it was acidic in the stomach but once it enters the bile or you can say that bile converts the acidic chyme into alkaline, alkaline chyme. Secondly, the second function of bile, bile does not contain any enzyme for the breakdown of the food but bile serves a very important function for the fats. Actually, the fat molecules, when we eat food items, you know that we are taking fats. Now, these fat molecules are very, very complex. Let's say this is a large fat molecule and it cannot be broken down. So, what happens in the presence of bile? Bile will break down these large fat molecules. So, large molecules or complex fat molecules are broken down into, into small molecules. And this is this phenomena is known as emulsification molecules. So this large fat molecule will be broken down into smaller molecules and these smaller molecules now can be fat molecules can be now broken down by the enzymes. So this process is brought about by bile and this process is known as emulsification. This can come in definition emulsification. So what is this emulsification? Emulsification is the breakdown of the large complex fat molecules into smaller ones. And these smaller ones are now called missiles. They have not written in your book. You will read in higher classes. So just you know that emulsification is the process of breakdown of fat molecules into small molecules. And this is caused by bile juice. So in duodenum, there are two main things which are happening. What? Which two main things? One is the acidic food which is brought from the stomach in the duodenum gets converted into alkaline in the presence of bile and secondly bile will cause emulsification of the fat molecules and they will become now smaller molecules which can now easily be broken down or we can say can now be easily digested. So here they have written that uh, Neutralizes the acid content of the food received from stomach and makes it alkaline to enable the pancreatic and intestinal enzymes to act. Now bile salts reduce the surface tension of fats and break them into tiny droplets. This is known as emulsification for providing greater surface area for the action of enzymes. When some large thing becomes gets breakdown into smaller molecules, surface area will increase and now enzymes can easily cause the breakdown. So overall reaction is explained here. Now we will discuss about pancreatic juice in the next video.